If you take a look at evolution over the last million years, the one species that has survived without adapting is man. That's because as soon as he picked up rocks and sticks, he realized he could hit things, he started adapting nature to him. That's why men fly into hurricanes. That's why they build their homes on earthquake fault lines. That's why they turn rainforests into malls. That takes some kind of an ego. We don't just stand back and admire the glory of the universe. We figure we can improve it. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. into a bug zapper, Ranger Gord is having his correspondence school class reunion, Glenn and I are going to pinstripe a boat, and then Bill's going to take an unexpected jog in the forest. I'm going to show you how easy it is to work with the self-sticking floor tiles. And now let's meet a man who still looks like his grade six picture, even though it was taken almost seven years ago, my uncle, Mr. Red Green! Here's a guy who looks exactly like his x-rays, my nephew Harold. <laughs> See what happens to teenagers when they're not allowed to use heavy equipment? <laughs> they had a big week this week up at the lodge here. The bunch of us took the roof right off of Buster's house. Now, Buster's has some great ideas, but this one is really super. Oh, yeah, better than, than his um, underwater pool. <laughs> better than his lightning trap. Better than his surface-to-air clothesline. <laughs> Harold Buster has paid his last lighting bill. Took off all the shingles, took out the ceilings of his house, replaced them all with glass. 100% natural lighting. Excuse me, Uncle Red. <laughs> but what about at night? Well, Harold is going to fill the whole attic with fireflies. <laughs> and at night, when those little guys light up, so will Buster's house. Well, perhaps you should remember that ancient saying, he who live in glass house should not have bugs in roof. <laughs> And don't forget that other ancient saying, bug-eyed goop with glasses not allowed in my house. Hi, I'm Ranger Gord. What year is it? Jack went looking for firewood. So Hal went looking for Jack. Stan went looking an hour ago and none of them ever come back. So George went out with a flare gun, and Stan went to see where they are. This is one of the complications when you camp right next door to a bar. <laughs> well, you know, when you started going out with her, you were just separated from your first wife. You promised that you'd marry her. Then your divorce came through. You promised you'd marry her. <laughs> so you started living together. You promised her you'd marry her. <laughs> Now, you don't have to be a white hat to see a pattern developing here. <laughs> you promised her you'd marry her. And to date, you have not, and I would say that her anger in you is what they would call justified. Now, we're not here to sell you on the virtues of getting married. No, we don't want to talk into something you already screwed up once. <laughs> we're here to help you stall for more time. Because even if you propose to her tonight, and we hope you will, there's still a lot of speed bumps you can use to kind of delay the process to get you up the aisle there. Like you're picking the ring. Now, that should take two months' salary. You don't know how much that is till you get a job. <laughs> then they're scheduling the date. There's so many things to work around there. All the sports playoffs. And take a pick in China. I mean, that could take months, even if you are being helpful. And there's which church? Oh, yeah, minister, justice of the peace. Guest list. Flowers. A cake. You, know, you can stretch this out well into the next millennium. <laughs> oh, yeah, you'll be pulling pensions sitting in a wheelchair by the time they roll you down the aisle. Yeah, you still need to stall for more time. You're going to rig the wheels to fall off. <laughs> by that point, I would imagine the wheels will be falling off pretty near everything. <laughs> While Buster Hatfield is corralling all the fireflies in the area, I thought I'd show you how to handle some of the other bugs that we get up here. I'm assuming you can still kill insects without offending a lobby group of some kind. <laughs> All right, for starters, what you want to do is to combine a couple of fly swatters with another common household kitchen appliance, the rat trap. 
Oh, uh, don't worry. This isn't occupied. This is uh, Moose Thompson's sock. <laughs> Probably got nailed trying to raid the fridge. <laughs> All right, first thing you want to do is to attach the fly swatters to the rat trap using the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. All right, now I got the fly swatters attached to the rat trap, and now I got to just bait it. What do you say about honey attracts flies? All right, now I wait for a fly. Harold says there's a fly in this box over here. Ah, I see. All right, so that's my fault. I'm the one who trusted Harold. All right, so the fly comes flying in. <laughs> lands on the trap. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is great. Might want to stand well back on that. Now, for those of you who like to kill bugs, uh, say, 100 at a time or so, I'm going to show you how to make a gigantic uh, fly strip. And what you're going to need are some of these uh, peel-and-stick uh, floor tiles that you got left over from that kitchen project where you measured wrong, multiplied wrong, converted to metric wrong, and then didn't let your wife choose the pattern. <laughs> All right, now you're going to need something to stick these things onto to become your fly strip. Something big. I'm thinking window. No, no. I'm thinking door. Here we go. This thing will catch the bugs on their way in or on their way out, depending on how clean you keep your house. All right. This becomes your fly strip. And now what you got to do to make that all work is uh, put the uh, floor tiles on, sticky side out, using a staple gun. Boy, these things really stick. This is going to work great. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Always a good idea to have extra tools and extra clothes on this project. <laughs> or, you know what you could do is to staple all the tiles on first and then peel the, the backing off. Yeah. Yeah, that would work. Learn from my mistakes. Somebody should. <laughs> Another tip, you might want to leave the sticky stuff off the bottom couple of feet of the door if you have a dog or a little kid or something. <laughs> now, this thing will work great and everything, but it's a little passive for my taste. I like something that uses power, so I'm thinking electric bug zapper, huh? And what you're going to need for this is one of these old beds, because you want the metal spring out of the bottom, and you're going to need yourself a roll of chicken wire. Now, I've wrapped the chicken wire all around the old metal bed spring so that none of the bugs will be able to slip through the cracks. What you want to do is to hook this whole rig up to the biggest power box you got in your home. <laughs> I'll tell you, the neighbors will have something to talk about here. If they can hear themselves or the sound of bugs frying, remember, <laughs> women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Let's see if we got any flying pests around here. <laughs> Boy, that works great. Kind of an odd smell, though. I could open up one of them Cajun restaurants. Mosquito cooking. <laughs> Stay tuned, coming up, I'm gonna do something that Bill had always wanted to. And Harold, like so many teenagers, had a little something extra in his pants. Well, the guys have installed the glass roof in Buster's house, looking real good. One giant skylight. <laughs> From the top of the hill looking down, it looks like a giant sandwich container with a see-through lid. <laughs> it's tight, it's dry, and it's ready for the fireflies. Buster figures a couple of hundred thousand will give them enough light at night and then privacy during the daytime. And Mrs. Hadfield is a lovely woman, but you just don't want to see a lot of her before 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, where's Buster going to get all these fireflies from? He's paying for them, Harold. Penny apiece. I figure I'm going to make a few bucks with this jar right here. Oh, 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 Uncle Red, when it comes to catching bugs, I am the champ. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're drawn to you like flies to something or other. Uh... <laughs> Maybe when the bugs see you, they think it's a family reunion, Harold. <laughs> or maybe it's because I'm an ichthyologist. Boy, there's a fancy word for doofus. Portions of this show would have been brought to you by Braxton's Marina, but we're having an off year. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Lost, a large European like Costa Tarantula. Oh. That sounds interesting. <laughs> also known as the tarantula spider. Oh. Okay, it escaped from a cage, likes dark, warm places. Contact Stinky if you see him, or if you suddenly feel a painful, sharp bite. He blows me out. <laughs> What's that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't bite there, don't bite there. Don't, oh, I'm young, don't bite that. <laughs> oh. 
Uncle Red, help! <laughs> oh! You like some fun? Ranger Guard! Red! Yeah. Red, come on in! Yeah. Come on in! You too, Harold! Come on, please. You're just in time. What's going on here, Gord? Well, my correspondence school is having a reunion today. <laughs> Where is everybody? Well, it's a correspondence school, Red. Everybody's where they've always been, at home. That's where we went to school. <laughs> and I might say I think I've held out pretty well. I yeah. still have all my own hair. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, all right. My good sports jacket still fits me. <laughs> oh, there's my old pen and pencil set. That brings back some memories. Oh, for gosh sakes. <laughs> You know, if, if I was at a real school with real people, I, I bet they'd tease the heck out of me and how I never let anybody borrow these. Yeah, oh you know, yeah, for sure. Uh, Gord, before we get too far into this, what can you tell me about catching fireflies? Not too much, Red. Oh. But I know somebody who does. I know somebody who does. Wait. Yeah. There he is, Harry Wells. He uh, majored in entomology. Oh, yeah, all right. Here's his address if you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was the class clown, I remember. Oh, what a character. Whoa. <laughs> but Gord, Gord, you never met this guy. <laughs> no, no. But in my mind, in my mind, I, I imagine that he was. <laughs> there is Joanna Armstrong. Oh, I had a I had a crush on her, something fierce. <laughs> Why don't you go tell her at the reunion? You know, the address is right there. Look, there we go. No, that's just the address of the correspondence school. Yeah, where everybody's meeting today for the reunion, you know? Read what it says. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh. No! no! No, I couldn't. I mean, it'd be dereliction of duty. I, I couldn't leave here. Oh, sure. I'll tell okay. you what. Tell you what. I'll cover for you for a day. Won't you, Harold? No! <laughs> no. It's my duty. It makes me who I am. Yeah, that's for sure, Gord. <laughs> some punch? Harold, you want some punch? <laughs> oh, it's red. Harold, you see my bait box anywhere? Oh, Uncle Red. I have a tarantula in my pants. Uh, no thanks, gonna use dew worms. <laughs> help me, help me, please. Oh, help me. What? Speak up, Harold. I have a huge killer tarantula in my pants. <laughs> oh. What is with you young people? First you got the earrings, then you got the nose rings, now you're putting killer spiders in your pants. <laughs> Lycosa tarantula, warm, dark places, sharp, painful bite. Well, why is it in your pants, Harold? Don't they feed those things? <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. I'll get it. Where is it? In the back, left side. All right, hold still, hold still. <laughs> Also, also, All right, hang on, 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 hang on. There. Got it. You want to see it? So I just take it outside and dispose of it? All right, but you owe me one. No, no, we're even. <laughs> Well, it's time for Adventures with Bill. What do you got for us today, Bill? I don't wear hats. Not that kind of... Oh, oh, I see. oh, it's a beekeeper. Oh, a beekeeper. Oh, boy, I don't know. You're going to be a beekeeper, Bill? I don't know. I don't... I've always been kind of leery about bees. Oh, my gosh, look at that hive. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Hey, stay back, stay back, stay back. I'm not allergic or anything, but I want... Oh, man. Now, apparently, they don't go far from the hive, so you're really not as much danger as, you know, but it's right on the end of the... Bill, you, you, Bill, you hung your, Bill, you hung your stuff right on the end of the branch of the, uh, the same, the hive, the, well, all right, all right. I wouldn't shake that, uh, I'd take it, I'd take, be a little careful of that, Bill. Now, apparently these beak, Bill, oh, 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 apparently, uh, uh, these outfits are made of some kind of material that the bee stinger won't go, I'm putting the hat on, yeah, I don't, I think the flannel is fine enough, Bill, don't pull, Bill, don't, Bill, 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 no, I wouldn't pull too hard, no, oh, oh, oh. no, don't worry about that anymore. Now I feel like I'm a kindergarten teacher trying to help him get his little coveralls on there. Like, what was that? What was that? I think something went by there, Bill. Did you see her something go by? No? I'm, oh, well. I guess we're okay. Now he's going to collect honey. Apparently, you stick a, a knife in the bottom of, of the hive. The honey will just drip out of there, just like Jimmy Rogers was singing a song about it. So oh, that's my job, I guess. Like, heck it is. I'm not going anywhere near them. Well, where's the hive? 
Where'd it go? Where'd the hive go? Wait a minute. I hope that's a hive. And I got a knife here, so just stand still, Bill. This will be perfectly safe, I think. I'm pretty sure. Oh, maybe not. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Looks like one of those uh, tap dancers. You know, the singer and dancing guys. Maybe it should be one of those B movies. Coming up, Harold's going to use his face to prove that bugs will eat anything. And our home reno expert, Mike, is going to do some wiring for us. <laughs> ah, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Possum Lodge has got to be the most dangerous place on Earth. I don't remember catching fireflies ever being life-threatening. I could be flirting with malaria. Well, if it works like your other flirting, you've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> So, uh, how many fireflies have you caught so far? Roughly none. <laughs> Good, we're tied. Well, I stopped trying, Harold, until Buster gets the fire put out. He had a fire? Yeah, something to do with the angle of the sun hitting the pitch of the roof, and then when they put the glass in, they kind of crimped her, so she's a bit bent, and it made like a laser beam into his house. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that's like when you take a magnifying glass and you hold it just so, you know, so you can burn the legs off ants. <laughs> well, this actually burned the legs off of Buster's dining room suite. And then as the day went by with the sun moving, that beam scorched a straight line across the rug, cut the couch in half, bisected the coffee table, melted the fridge, and cooked the kissing garamis in his aquarium. <laughs> wow. What's he going to do now? A rain dance, I would think. <laughs> You know what the hardest part of this job is? Leap years. <laughs> this week in our uh, dream home renovation segment, we're going to do some work on the lodge itself. Because you know that old saying, charity begins at home. Of course, not my home. <laughs> so you know, to me, the mark of a truly wonderful house is the number of electrical outlets it has. You can't have enough of those babies. So I've asked Mike here to put another electrical outlet up into my bedroom right above us here. And Please welcome our contractor, Mike. Hi, Mr. Green. Well, here it is, a plug to your bedroom, just like you asked for it. <laughs> well, Mike, it looks like you, you took a wire from the basement, come up through the floor, and went straight up through the ceiling there. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. You got a plug in the middle of your room. Yeah. You can plug into anything you want in the whole wide right. room. Right. It's convenient, yeah. right? Yeah. See, I'm applying myself, Mr. Green. Yeah. Just like you and the prison chaplain told me to. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's good. I just, you know, I just don't know how I feel about this cable hanging right through the center of the living room here. Well, nobody will notice. <laughs> no, I, I think they might, Mike. You know, it <laughs> kind of catches your eye there. God, I knew it would work. I mean, I'm useless. I'm just a piece of garbage, you know. I'm just useless. Oh, now, Mike, don't get down on yourself. You tried something that just didn't fly, that's all. Hey, I got a great idea. We build a wall, cover up the wire, right? Right down the middle here, right? You got to uh, separate your living room into two rooms. You got two living rooms, right? Well, two half living rooms. <laughs> Okay, okay, then you build uh, a wall just up to here, like a oh, half wall, yeah. right? Like you want to talk, you oh, can yeah. say, hello, yeah, how are you? Oh, oh, yeah. See? Yeah, 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 yeah that'd like be that. nice, I right? Like, like a Dutch, uh, Dutch, a Dutch wall. wall. A Dutch yeah. wall. All right. And then what would you do with the cable that goes from there on up? Oh, jeez. Oh. Right. <laughs> I'm a piece of no. human farm manure. That's what I am. <laughs> You know, just send me back, lock me up, take me away. Oh, I'm no, a piece no. of uselessness, that's what I am. Got a thought, got a thought. <sighs> what? You see that vertical beam there? Why don't we bring that over here, put the wire up inside it. Nobody's gonna see it, nobody's gonna be any the wiser. Well, that's a supporting beam, isn't it? Yeah, but we'll move it really fast. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Mr. Green. I know. You're a genius, you know? <laughs> Braxton's Marina with uh, Glenn Braxton here. I understand business is booming, Glenn. Oh, not bad, Red. Last year, uh, we lost $50,000. Yeah. This year, only halfway through the season, we're only down 12000 So we're pretty excited. <laughs> well, that is a big success story right there, yeah. Oh, things are turning around, Red. What with uh, free trade and interest rates and <laughs> that insurance claim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this year, we're offering better service to our customers, too. Oh, I would think service would be a huge growth area for yeah. you. Oh, and we changed hours. So oh. now we're open during the season. Right. Yeah, and, and we, we jack prices way up, too. 
All right, and of course, we're doing the boat care demonstration as part of our show. Exactly, which brings us to today's uh, boating tip, is how to make the boat look better. Uh-huh. Now, if it doesn't run good, that doesn't mean it can't look good. No, so, and I, I guess with a boat like this, we go go see Edgar, get some dynamite, and oh, blow no, this right, pump no, right. right. What? what? Oh. The insurance company won't buy that twice. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's <a video> that. <laughs> well, anyway, Red, uh, pinstriping. Oh, that's the key. Right. Oh, gosh. There you go. I can't uh, do it. I get dizzy when I bend over. So. Oh, all right. <laughs> now, what kind of tape is this, man? Uh, Gore-Tex, Vortex. I can't, uh, the salesman told me they used it on the Hubble Space Telescope. No kidding. Yeah. It's waterproof, fireproof, non-fading and meteor resistant. Wow, you know, Buster should run a strip of this right across his living room floor to block that sunbeam thing. Oh, he could, sure, he could do that, yeah. It's, you know, he could put it right across a hardwood floor because it's made for lap track wood boats. For gosh yeah. sakes. Yeah. You're only limited by your imagination, right? Well, let's see if I can catch my limit. <laughs> Glenn, you got any more tape there? <laughs> No, that was all the free samples, right? Did you save enough for the name? Well, yeah, as long as the boat's called Hyphen. <laughs> I don't think it's going to matter, Red. No? No, you only use a name to identify a boat. I, I think we got that covered. <laughs> well, Buster Hadfield's Firefly Skylight is going into the Possum Lodge record books. The first project that did not cause serious injury and almost worked. <laughs> almost? I thought it looked great last night. All those fireflies all over the place in the ceiling looked like shooting stars. Yeah, he had his own planetarium for a while there, but, but Buster didn't take into account the bats. I mean, the bats saw all them fireflies, looked at them like one of them all-you-can-eat bug buffets. <laughs> they started dive-bombing the house. Oh, no. Splat. Yeah, but not that splat. They pulled out of the dive because their radar detected the glass. But the bat droppings here, oh, that blocked out the sun. So to scrape them off, Buster had to hook up a gigantic windshield wiper. Excuse me, Uncle Rad, but what did he use? Well, he went and ripped off one of them flashing arms from the railroad crossing. Oh, that is illegal and dangerous. Oh, no, it worked great. Oh, you mean the train crash. <laughs> Well, Harold, nobody can prove that that arm would have stopped the cow from going on the tracks anyway. <laughs> you know, you don't realize how many parts there are in a cow until you see one broken down into its components like that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Where's the beef? All over Buster's roof, actually. So he's going back to regular shingles, but the good news is he's going to have a barbecue and invite us all over as soon as he scrapes all the hamburger out of the eaves troughs. <laughs> Don't mention that at the meeting tonight. No, I'll be down a little while, half hour or so. Okay. My wife is watching. I'll be coming uh, straight home after the meeting, and I'm bringing us a little, a little pet, a little firefly named Sparky. I figure we can keep him down at the foot of the bed, and that way maybe I won't stub my toe when I get up in the middle of the night. Mind you, the bed has to be shaken for him to work. <laughs> And to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang out here at Possible Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.